Who could have seen this coming, huh? <laughs> after hiring Doc Rivers, after firing Adrian Griffin, the Milwaukee Bucks are um, one in four with Doc Glenn Rivers. Glenn Doc Rivers. <laughs> My bad. Um, <laughs> as you can see with the replies, who could have predicted this? Gil, you better show up today as Coach Gil. <laughs> Oh my God! You got you got Warriors fans trying to you know what I'm saying recruit Giannis in the comment section. My fuckers already saying the Bucks are already eliminated. But um, boy, the reason why I do want to talk about it is honestly, it's gonna be a hot take. I want to throw Doc Rivers some bail. I want to throw Doc Rivers some bail because we're talking about predictions for the rest of the season. Let's go ahead and make some predictions on my favorite app. Price Picks, the sponsors of this video. Price Picks is my go-to way to play daily fantasy sports, and the game is very, very simple. All you gotta do is go on their app or go on their website, sign up for an account, pick your favorite league, your favorite sport. Uh, they got a bunch of stats to choose from. Because we're NBA heads, we're gonna go to NBA real quick, right? Trey Young is facing the Boston Celtics tonight, and I feel like he's gonna dog us. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I feel like he's gonna dog us right there. On the flip side, Jason Tatum likes to show up against bad teams this season, uh, more so than good teams, at least from what I, the games I've been watching. And the Atlanta Hawks are mid. I'm going um, to just keep it a bean. Um, I can see him hitting four threes. And boom, that is how you place an entry. And thanks to our friends over at Prize Picks. You guys can use code SLZ to get a 100% match on your first deposit of up to $100. So if you put in $100, they will give you $100, and now you got $200 to play with. Shout out to Prize Picks for sponsoring this video, and back to the video. Because I understand it's, it's, it's funny to make fun of Doc Rivers right now because they are one in four. Um, and honestly, it's, it's, it's the same thing with the Adrian Griffin situation. It's the same thing with the Darvin Ham situation. Another mismatch of expectations and timing. You know what I'm saying? And expectations and timing. This is why I was not a fan of them firing Adrian Griffin, even though he was not the right person for the job. At the end of the day, I don't, well, I'll say this. I don't, I don't think Adrian Griffin at this point in his career was ready to lead that team to a championship. One, I don't think they should have, uh, they should have hired him. But two, after they already decided to hire him, I still don't think they should have fired him for this exact reason. Because when you fire someone, you either believe they are so bad that literally anyone can come in and replace them and it is going to be an upgrade or... You already know there is an upgrade coming. So when the situation right now is this and the replacement and the coaching landscape is you ending up landing Doc Rivers and you doubling down on it and giving him a, a, a long-term contract, you got to lay in your bed and stay there. And I can't feel sorry for you. I'm sorry. Giannis, I can't feel sorry for you. Because, and maybe this is me being Twitter, Twitter B-Souls, but a lot of people were saying that Giannis had a, had, a, had a part in firing Adrian Griffin as well. You know what I'm saying? So, the reason why I want to throw Doc Rivers some bail is because of the fact that yet again, for the second time in the same season, the Milwaukee Bucks... Constructed this 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 team with the personnel with the players that have championship or bust expectations. You got Dame, you got Giannis. You're trying to win a championship this year, but then you decide to hire a rookie coach that's never been a head coach before to lead this team to the, to, to the promised land. When Damian Lillard is thirty, when Giannis is in the the, the damn middle of his prime, when Chris Middleton is aging. You are a rookie head coach that's never coached at, at, from a head coach level within the NBA ever in his life. That is what you do. And then even though the Milwaukee Bucks had the third best record in the league at the time, even though, listen, the, the, you know, the, the weaknesses were seen, they were still playing good. What do you do? You fire that coach in the middle of the season and you hire Doc Rivers. And I understand that there's a relationship there between Adrian Griffin and Doc Rivers, and Doc Rivers isn't starting from ground zero. He might be starting from level one. But at the end of the day, you gave this man Doc Rivers half a season in the middle of the season to figure this shit out.
And that's I, I think that's unfair. I think that's unfair to Doc Rivers, to be honest with you. It takes time to build culture. It takes time to build relationships with your players. It takes time to implement systems. It, 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 take time, it takes time to develop um, and instill philosophies within your team. But because it's halfway through the season, and they, they've been playing this way for half of the season, you're just going to come in and, and change shit up and think everything is going to go fine and dandy. No, that's, no that's, that's not how that works. That's not how that works. So then I beg the question again for the Milwaukee Bucks front office and Milwaukee Bucks fans and all the Milwaukee. What happens next? <laughs> what happens next? If they keep losing like this, which I do believe they will bounce back, they're talented enough to bounce back. If they keep losing like this, if they somehow choke and freeze in the playoffs in dramatic fashion, like Doc Rivers' teams tend to do, what do you do next? I would hope you don't fire Doc Rivers. <laughs> I don't think you can. I, I I don't think Milwaukee can. First of all, they just signed him to a, to a multi-year deal. Um, second of all, again... Firing two head coaches um, within six months of them starting to be a head coach. or um, I think that's a toxic environment. You're going to lose a lot of trust in that locker room. Too much trust in that locker room. Um, so now you're stuck in a conundrum where if, if, if Doc Rivers and the Milwaukee Bucks choke this season, I feel like a lot of fans are going to blame Doc Rivers, and maybe even rightfully so. Because I, I'm not going to lie, a lot of the criticism with Doc Rivers is valid. However, who hired him? However, who put himself to be in this position? At the end of the day, that's the front office, right? At the end of the day, that's, that's, that's the front office. I'll, I'll, I'll take it to YouTube terms. If me as a YouTuber, my, my personality, my brand is my team, and I hire an editor. Well, I do believe the pie is never a hundred percent. The the accountability pie, the blame pie, is never a hundred percent to someone. There's always it's always a give and take type of thing, right? If a video editor fucks up on a video, has hella typos in it, um, you know what I'm saying? Fucked it up like crazy. Fucked up the brand deal. Didn't upload it right. All of, all, all of these things. Right? Surface level people would blame the editor. And I will say there is some accountability to be held on the editor. Bro, what the fuck? Take your fucking time. You know what I'm saying? Do your job properly. But at the same token, I, as a person who hired this editor, had all the no no one was rushing me to hire an editor as soon as possible. No one was no one was telling me I only had 24 hours to find an editor. Right? And even in that whole process, it is up to me to vet the candidates and ultimately make a decision. And I have to live with those decisions and be held accountable for those decisions. Right? So with the NBA. It's weird because I, I feel like because we don't see them in front of our eyes as much as we do with the coaches, as much as we do with the players, we don't talk about the front office enough because motherfuckers don't even know who run these teams. How the fuck can you blame someone when you don't know who to blame? But, but, but what you do see is the players, right? But what you do see is the coach on the... You, you, you do see Darvin Ham with his hands in his pocket. So you can blame him. But who hired Darvin Ham? Who hired Darvin Ham? So, for Doc Rivers, is he an overrated coach? Yes. <laughs> I, will, I will say that. If, if I just had to put a, a needle on it, yes, Doc Rivers, in my opinion, is, is an overrated coach. But I do think there's a level of unfairness to what the fuck is going on that we need to throw Doc Rivers some bail. Some bail. 